Hello guys, today we're taking a look into The Legend of Zelda and Adventure of Link for some secrets. I know this definitely isn't all the secrets in these games, but it's quite a bit of them. Let me know in the comments some of your favorite secrets or easter eggs that we went over in this video, or let me know some that I missed. Without any further delay, here's the video. The Legend of Zelda was the first video game in the franchise. Released in 1986, it was a popular top-down game. With it being the first in the series, there really isn't too many easter eggs, but there's quite a few secrets, like you can skip the whole first quest by simply putting your screen name as Zelda. One of the most annoying things about these old games is the lack of a manual save menu, but on the original NES, if you take a second controller and press start followed by up A, you'll be given a save menu without dying. This also works with the visual console, but it only needs one controller. While you're at a fairy fountain healing your lost hearts, you can do a manual save while getting healed for a restart with max hearts. This way you can have full hearts from the beginning of the game. There's literally nothing keeping you from walking in any level and simply taking the item of that level. You may not be able to reach all the levels without the raft or stepladder, but it's still obtainable. I do this sometimes if I want a smooth, quick playthrough. The hungry Goria can be easily removed by doing the manual save in the room with the Goria. Once you return to that room, it'll be gone. I really hope you found some food. Sometimes there's an Octorok that spawns on the raft dock to get to level 4, which is okay when you're on land since you can eliminate the problem, but on the return back, it can shoot your raft with a rock and send you back to level 4. You either have to play the recorder and warp to another level, or travel into level 4 deep enough to respawn the outside enemies. If you kill all but one of the enemies on the screen, the enemies will not respawn when you leave the screen, making it a lot easier to travel around the overworld, but if you go into a cave or a dungeon, this voids, making all of the respawns happen. If you go into level 1 and immediately walk back out and re-enter, you'll find the locked door is open leaving you with an extra key to use in any level, since the keys don't correspond to any particular level like they do in the later games. There are 5 hidden heart containers hidden throughout the overworld in both quests. They share 2 locations and have 3 unique ones for each quest. Starting with the two they share, you can find a heart container two screens south of Hyrule's northeastern point. Once there, you can raft one screen south. The other one is found three screens south of this heart container. You do need a stepladder to acquire this one though. In quest 1, you can find one four screens to the right of the start screen. You need to bomb the wall to the left of the north exit of this screen. The next one is found southwest from the Lost Hills. You need to bomb the right side of this rock to gain access to the secret room. The last one is found at Lake Hylia, which is one screen south of level 1. You need to use the blue candle to burn this fifth bush from the right. In quest 2, the first one is found under the northwest graveyard under the second headstone in the row to the left. The power band is required for this heart container. The next is two screens south of the waterfall. If you play the recorder, you'll have a secret staircase appear. The last one is three screens right of Spectacle Rock. You need to play the recorder once more to reveal a hidden staircase. There are a lot of hidden spots in this game for different things like heart containers, wise men, games, shops, and even old men that make you pay a repair fee. I'll leave this map here if you want to see all of them. Bushes need a candle to burn them down, rocks and edges need bombs, Usually the ones in the middle of the screen require the recorder. Some of these will also require the raft or the stepladder as well. I'll also be posting this photo on my Twitter and Reddit if you want a clear copy. I'll leave it linked in the description below. Anywho, in level 6 you can pre-shoot an arrow at the level's boss, Red Goma, before it spawns and get an insta-kill. This only works for the Red Goma because of its health they have. Most people know that the maps in each level of the second quest spell out Zelda, but a lesser known fact is each level is named after the map's image. They are also made in a way that they can all mesh together so they would fit nicely in the way that the maps are developed in this game. There is a cosmetic effect where if Link swings his sword right before the animation of the screen flipping in a level, you can actually see him walking with the sword out in the fighting position. When you get a bottle filled with red potion, after one use it turns blue, signaling that you have one use left. If you fill the bottle up while it's blue, it will turn red again, saving you some rupees in time. We all know bubbles. These guys bounce around the level screen. The red ones take our ability to use our sword rather than hearts, but the blue ones actually give you that ability back. I talked about this in the Zelda Did It Survive series, but but these little guys are called Paul's voice. When you play on a Famicom, you can literally yell at the second controller and they will disappear. There are other methods for other consoles with key combinations that still get the job done, but who doesn't like yelling at their controller? A year later, The Adventure of Link was released in 1987. It was a Nintendo experiment on the 2D platform. I know this game gets a bad rap, but it's actually got some pretty cool secrets and some starter easter eggs. Like if you pay attention to the village names, you'll start to hear some familiar names from the later installments. You might also remember this game not having a manual save. But, wouldn't you know, there's a secret save menu. Working similar to The Legend of Zelda, except in this game you need to click select on Player 1's controller, then while in the submenu on Controller 2, click up and A at the same time to show the manual save screen. A common misconception on the I'm Error Guy is this is a mistranslation or forgotten filler text of some kind. But it's actually a joke from the developers. That's actually the NPC's name. 
There's another guy that looks very close to him in the water town of Saria named Bagu, which means bug in English. So I guess you could say that Adventure of Link has some bugs and errors in its code. The names Raru, Ruto, Saria, Mido, Naburu, and Darunia. These are the towns in Adventure of Link, but all but one of these guys are sages in Ocarina of Time. As we know though, Mido is found in Ocarina of Time as well as a side NPC. Some of these names trickle down as far as Tears of the Kingdom as well. Speaking of towns, most people know that you can find spells to help you out throughout the game, including Fairy, Fire, Jump, Life, Reflect, Shield, Spell, and Thunder. Each of them help in their own way, but not all of them are necessary to complete the game. There are also two extra attack combos that you can obtain as well. One is the upstrike found in Darunia Village. You need to find the house with a chimney, use the jump spell, and proceed down the chimney. And the downstrike, my personal favorite. It's found in the town of Mido, and you need to locate the church, use jump again, and go in the top door. In the original NES version of this game, the game over screen actually strobes. Obviously, I'm not going to show that, but imagine this image but flashing blue and white. Another fairly known fact is that in the Shadow Link fight, you can stand on the left side of the screen crouched, and you can spam B for an attack with only a handful of his attacks hitting you. After you finish the game, you'll get a cute little triangle next to your save file. You'll also get to keep all of your attack, health, magic, spells, and thrust, but your heart and magic containers and special objects will be revoked. With the fairy spell, you can actually just fly through any locked door in any dungeon with no keys. As soon as you leave the magic healer's house in any town, if you do the life spell before your magic meter is completely finished, you can get both bars full at one time. The magic meter won't stop refilling while you do the spell. This works really well if you're in the town of Naburu while you're farming XP with a tech type nearby. Ganon's laugh of the game over screen might sound familiar to you. It's this guy's knockout laugh from NES's Punch-Out. Just listen to these two side by side. <laughs> In the pop-up battles in the overworld, instead of playing all the way through the area, you can just move to the side next to where you spawn for an easy escape. As long as you stay on the path in the overworld, the pop-up enemies really won't spawn too much, making it a safe place to roam. If you look at the bottom of the map in Adventure of Link, you might notice a subtle nod to The Legend of Zelda. This looks just like the original map of Hyrule. This looks like the river and the lake in the center of the map, the graveyard to the left, the pond with trees surrounding it, and even Death Mountain. This is all the facts that I could dig up. Please let me know if I missed any. If you like this kind of video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a new video. I'll be doing all of the Legend of Zelda main games like this, showing as many secrets and easter eggs as I can. If you have a secret that you'd like me to add into an upcoming video, you can let me know on any of these platforms or in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time guys, be safe and do some side quests.